Ooh, yeah! Ladies and gentlemen, I am here with my review of WWE's Macho Man, the Randy Savage Story DVD that came out about a few weeks ago. I uh, wasn't able to get it on release date. However, I was able to get this past weekend and able to watch it this past weekend. So I present with you guys my review of the DVD and whatnot. So without further ado, let's jump right into the video and let's see my thoughts on it. So uh, let's get to it. Freak out, freak out. Of course, here is the cover. It just says Macho Man, the Randy Savage story on it. Got a picture of the Macho Man in all his glory on the uh, second turnbuckle right there. Awesome cover. It's very simple, but very effective. That's what I love about simple covers, because they're, they're always effective for some reason. I don't know why. You know, you'd think the more they go out on the covers, the more badass they seem, but it's always the more simple they are, the more effective they are. So I don't know how that works, but it just does. But yeah, glorious cover here. Spine, got Macho King pointing right at me, or at you, rather. Uh, Macho Man Randy Savage, the Randy Savage story. Uh, spine right there. Go to the back, got some pictures of the Macho Man dig it. Uh, and all his glory right there at the Ultimate Mania. Let's look at that, Ultimate Maniacs. Rest in peace, you guys. Uh, him pointing, I guess he's pointing at, I don't up there, I guess, I don't know. Uh, featuring is pretty much, you know, some people are that were interviewed for the documentary. So you can just look at that, read it. Of course, here's the little description thing right there in all the DVDs. Ooh, yeah! WWE fans, you have waited long enough. Randy, Macho Man Savage, uh, captivated the sports entertainment world for over a quarter century. His glistering wardrobe, often imitated uh, cadence and grandiose style, was outshined only by his uh, virtuose performance in the ring. Macho Man, what is gorgeous leading lady, lady Miss Elizabeth, embodied the raging 80s in WWE and later combined his success in WCW. Now the, the complete story of his incredible life can finally be told in Macho Man, the Rainy Savage story. In this 90 minute documentary, get brand new exclusive commentary from family, friends, and his, uh, com, uh, com, fuck. One of those words, I know what it is, uh, uh, commentaries, uh, no, not, not commentaries, you know what it is, it's just one of those words that's on the tip of my tongue, but for some reason I just can't say it right now, as they are chronicled in his absence from young baseball phenomenon, or uh, phenom through all his pomp and, uh, circumstance of his incredible career. You open it up, you got some nice pictures, artwork right there, you got Macho Man jumping from, you know, doing the flying elbow, and a picture of him and Miss Elizabeth, uh, which, I don't like that glare up there. It's not from my camera or anything. You can see right there. It's actually the part of the artwork, so I don't like that that the glare is there. But what are you going to do? Uh, you open it up. Here's what looks like the inside here, of course. is the uh, contents for disc one, so if you want to pause out and read it, go ahead. Nothing's stopping you from doing so. Um, here is on disc two, the matches and whatnot. Let's pause and read if you'd like. And there's matches for disc three. So there's not a lot of matches and whatnot on here, but all of his great stuff you is really on the first set, so I didn't expect, you know, a lot on this match wise. But here's disc one and behind disc one, got a nice picture of Macho Man. Dig it. Uh, here's disc two. And behind disc two. God damn it. Another picture of Macho Man looking nice. And get in there. And behind disc three, god damn, another picture of Macho Man. So, nice artwork on this set. God damn, that's the way, one thing I have about these three disc sets is stupid things right here, because sometimes they break too, so then you're screwed. But yeah, that's the artwork for the DVD. Uh, let me put this back on the stand over here. Um, let's get the DVD into the picture here. Alright, um, now, let me try and set this up and talk about it as I'm setting it up. Now, um, the documentary... You know, it's only 90 minutes, so it, it's, a, it's a short documentary, which, to be honest, I expected, you know, I expected a short documentary from this. Um, well, not short, but I didn't expect it to be like a two-hour documentary, and, you know, length to me really isn't uh, that much of an issue. Um, you know, it's always the qu quality over quantity, so the quality of this DVD, I thought the documentary was very well done. Uh, especially for a documentary that was done without him, because they, you know, physically couldn't get him for this, because, you know, he passed away and everything. But I thought, for what they could have done, they put on an excellent job. I'd definitely say it's the DVD of the year by far. Um, i definitely say I enjoyed the documentary more than the Paul Heyman one. 
I enjoyed it more than the, uh, I don't think there is any other documentary DVDs besides this one. Well, they have that True Giants DVD coming out next week, but, you know, I don't really care for that. But, yeah, they didn't come out with too many documentaries. They, the DVDs are more focused on the network. Uh, they, they focus more on the network than DVDs this year, unfortunately, so you didn't get too much. But out of the documentary, like I said, without him, for the 90 minutes you got, I thought it was well produced. I thought, you know, Lenny Poffo did a great job. Um, you know, he really was, like, you know, the holding point for the documentary. Like, not holding point, but, like, he held it together. Um, you know, it was, you know, he, if anyone knows Macho Man better than anyone, it's his brother, Lan Lanny Poffo. So, you know, I thought he did a good job holding the documentary together with everyone else. So, without him, I thought they did an excellent job. Great documentary here. Um, just, it was amazing, you know, it was, it was really well done, uh, very good backstories, you know, even though he couldn't talk physically for himself, I mean, they, they played clips from an old interview from 1993, uh, it might have been for like a home video exclusive or something, but, um, from what they did, they, I thought they did an excellent job, you know, the game documentary, it was well paced too, I thought the production of it was really well done, um, you know, it started off with Lenny Poffo visiting his death site, you know, which was, you know, it was cool and sad to see at the same time. Uh, documentary started off talking about his, you know, his father, uh, Angelo Poffo, how he was an athlete and everything, and how he used to be a wrestler, and, you know, how he met his father, and or met his mother, and everything, and, you know, uh, Randy and, Randy and Lanny were, the, you know, the two kids, and, you know, uh, Randy was always an active person, even as a kid, you know, he's, he always wanted to do something, whether it's, you know, I don't know, picking garbage up on the floor in class, you know, to doing sports, he's always an active person, wanted to do things, and he talked about how, you know, he, he wanted to be a professional baseball player more than anything. You know, he was he, he loved sports, but he just, he want, his love was really in, uh, to becoming a professional baseball player. And, you know, he tried to do that. He became one. He was signed. But, you know, he spent like three or four years in the minor league. He never got called up. And he just, it frustrated him to the point where he actually took his bats, uh, went home to Florida and took his bats and shattered his bats on his tree. So that's how much, you know, he's just, you know, he left a lot of behind, too. He left his, you know, his girlfriend at the time behind. He left a lot of things behind to pursue his career, and, you know, it didn't go through. And, you know, after that, you know, t after baseball didn't work out, he got into wrestling, you know, which was his first love. Uh, he started training for wrestling, and, and, you know, he started getting in shape. That his transformation was, like, he really transformed to a different person. Like, when you look at the pictures of him, when he's, like, you know, early adult, in the kid, like, he really transformed his look and everything, it, drastically, um, you know, and he, he got his look and everything, you know, he, he, he talked about how he got the name, you know, Randy, obviously, his first name, uh, Savage, he had Savage part, because he didn't want to, you know, go off his father's name, and, um, get the Savage, because he looked like a Savage, and he wrestled like a Savage, so they named him Randy Savage, and the Macho Man part is always his nickname, so he just kept the Macho Man part, and, you know, we talked about how his promos, you know, his, um, where he got the ooh yeah from, you know, his brother actually brought it up from an old promo from someone else who used to say that. So he kind of took that and, you know, incorporated it into his promos. And it was funny because his promos, he, he was never comfortable doing promos and he always thought Lenny, you know, was better at him at it. So it was kind of like, it's weird to see that. Yeah. And he talked about how, uh, Savage got into, uh, Memphis wrestling with Jerry Lawler and them down there. That's how he broke in. And that would, you know, lead to him going to WWE and whatnot and having a run there. And he talked about how, you know, they wanted him to have a, val a valet or valet with him. And they, they originally wanted to have him be with uh, Missy Hyatt. But, you know, he said, you know what, why not have my wife do it? You know, she's beautiful. She's not blonde, but, you know, she's beautiful. And that's what, you know, led into Miss Elizabeth being brought in because Randy brought her in. Uh, talked about how just everything about him was just different and iconic, like his entrance you know, with the the robes and everything was different. You know, his music was, like, not upbeat, but not too slow. It was, like, perfectly paced and, like, it fit with him. And talked about his different attires. You know, they even got his, you know, costume designer on the documentary, which I thought was really cool of him to do. Um, he talked about his promos, how they're always, um, you know, just everything was something. was It was always different and always memorable, you know, whether it was him yelling and, you know, yelling crazy things or having his back turned to the camera Whatever he was doing the interview or his promo, like, it captivated your attention and made you watch. So that was, like, really innovative of him. And, you know, talked about him becoming the Intercontinental Champion, how that was, a, you know, a stepping stone to becoming, you know, the World Champion in his feud with uh, Ricky Steamboat, which, you know, pretty much launched him at WrestleMania 3, the match WrestleMania 3 with Ricky Dragon Steamboat. Just told the show, one of my favorite matches of all time. And, you know, Ricky Steamboat even, like, Ricky Steamboat even cried because he just 
got emotional thinking of that match because you just, you know, that's that's the match for, you know, you can argue for both of them. That's their greatest match of all time. And I was just, it was really cool, you know, having them talk about that match. And he talked about how, you know, he became the uh, WWE champion a, a year later at, at WrestleMania 4, you know, winning the tournament. And, you know, after that, he became the face of professional wrestling or the WWE at the time. And, you know, uh, eventually down the line later that year, he started the program with uh, Hulk Hogan and becoming the Mega Powers, which would lead, lead to the WrestleMania 5 match. And um, it was kind of funny because they talked about how um, the, that uh, that infamous backstage segment with Elizabeth in the in the, the training room where Hogan's aiding her and Savage attacked him, that was a shoot. Like, that was legit. Like, that was a legit argument. That wasn't, you know, part of the script. That was, like, a legit shoot there. Which is interesting, you know, him and Hogan had the uh, love-hate relationship. One minute they hated each other, one minute they loved each other. So they had a weird relationship. And, you know, talking about Macho Man being jealous of uh, Miss Elizabeth. Not really being jealous, but just being very protective of her. Uh, making her stay in one locker room. making They're always together, you know. there's They even brought up how Macho Man was away for like a month or whatever. And he bought like 24 TV dinners and said, Alright, stay at home. Don't go anywhere. You have dinner. You have everything you need here. Don't go anywhere. So he was just protective of her. And, you know, everyone confirmed it. But, of course, Lenny Poffo, you know, being his brother, kind of defended it, saying how everyone mis mis misunderstood it. But it's like, come on. Over Obviously, he's overprotective, you know, which is not, it's not bad. But, you know, you know, it's if you have a hot girlfriend and hot wife, you know, you got to I'd be kind of overprotective, too. Not as much as he was. They made out the scene, but, you know, I'd, I'd do the same thing. But um, they talked about their marriage at SummerSlam 1991, their on-screen marriage, how they reunited at WrestleMania 7, and, uh, you know, how the marriage was the main event of SummerSlam 1991. And then, you know, very soon after, they got divorced in real life and everything, and they split apart and everything, which really affected Macho Man. You know, it took time off for that because of that reasoning. And, you know, talked about him getting into Slim Jim, which... You know, he made the marquee, he was pretty much the selling point for Slim Jim. You know, he was a marquee seller for it, so that was a big deal for him. Uh, I talked about him being on commentary and an ambassador for WWE. You know, him on commentary in early 1993 and whatnot. And, you know, him um, being an ambassador, doing all these charities and events and appearances. He really enjoyed doing that, but he just, he, he, he even said he loved doing that, but, like, he just felt like he had one last run in him, you know, even though he was up there in the age for wrestling. He still felt like he had one last run. And he talked about, you know, how he wanted one last run. And he wanted his retirement match at WrestleMania. He didn't specify which WrestleMania. But he just said he wanted a retirement match at WrestleMania against Shawn Michaels. That's all I wanted. One last program with Shawn Michaels and his retirement match at WrestleMania with Shawn Michaels. Vince didn't do it, which when you think about it is fucking mind-blowing, why would you not go through with that, that's, Shawn Michaels, Randy Savage, WrestleMania, that just, that's just yelling money, like, that definitely would have put Shawn Michaels on the map right there, um, yeah, I talked about that, you know, because he didn't get the last run he wanted, he went to WCW, where he could have his last run, and whatnot, you know, and he talked about his feud with Hogan, how, um, just, uh, just Hogan, like I said, on and off again relationship, whether it's good or bad, they either love each other or hate each other one minute, which, you know, led to the incident with, um, with, uh, Miss Elizabeth flying down to, uh, Hogan's house once, which really infuriated him. But he talked about his feud with DDP, how, you know, just, he, he wanted to put DDP over, and that was a huge thing with DDP at the time, because DDP was still on the rise, and Macho Man, you know, willingly put him over, no problem. So that meant a lot to DDP. Uh, talked about, you know, how WCW ended in 2001, how, you know, guys went back to WWE, but it was a comment by Triple H, uh, and things that they did, you know, when Macho Man left, making fun of him, like on the Larry King thing, and Triple H calling him a fossil in the interview. A lot of things they did just really upset him and hurt him. That's why he never went back uh, to WWE after, you know, WCW ended. And, you know, when Miss Elizabeth died, um, you know, that, that affected him too. Even though they were divorced, he still loved her, and they, it still mildly affected him. And, you know, talk about his life after wrestling, you know, how he just... He just lived his life, you know, he, um, was, he loved it, he, you know, he just lived his life to the fullest, he got back together with his old girlfriend and married her, and whatnot, and, you know, it was, he just, he loved living his life, and he was a happy person, you know, and it was, um, they talked about, you know, a year after he got married, and a year after his father passed, was, you know, when he had the heart attack behind the wheel and crashed and, uh, you know, died, and he talked about how, you know, 
Randy found out he was uh, he was actually I think he was in California or Texas. He was he wasn't he wasn't home, and he got the phone call that Randy you know passed away, and um, Hulk Hogan told the story which I don't think would have prevented it, but Hogan said that because they had the same doctor, and Randy was supposed to get his heart checked that day, but he decided not to because his mom you know his mom is pretty old so. He was looking out for her while being over his, so he's like, oh, I'll get my heart checked another day. And uh, the doctor told Hogan that, you know, if Randy would have gotten his heart checked that day, they would have found out what was wrong with him. And, you know, Hogan said that, you know, it would have been prevented, but I don't think you can prevent heart attacks from happening. You just can't prevent it from happening. So I don't, I don't, I think they would have found out what was wrong with him, but they, I don't think they could prevent it from happening. So it was kind of distraught hearing that. But, um... Yeah, that's pretty much what ended the documentary was that, and, uh, you know, just an, a great documentary, a must-have for any Macho Man fan, or just any wrestling fan in general. Like I said, the fact that they couldn't get him in the actual interview and talk about it, um, they did a phenomenal job, you know, making up for him not being able to do it, or participating in it. So, um, yeah, that's my review for it. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, hopefully you guys went out and bought the DVD as well. It's a must-have, like I said, and until next time, I'll see you guys later. Ooh, yeah!